Hello everybody and welcome to my NXT uh, review. I want to call it a, um, I would say a takeover like card on this show tonight, but there is a lot that did happen on NXT tonight. Two title matches and a big debut tonight, which I got a lot to say about that. And a couple of other, you know, good, I would say somewhat important things going on in this show. Somewhat, I would say, not all, but uh, there's a lot to say about NXT tonight, though. We did kick it off with Tom Phillips, pretty much hyping up what's going to go on tonight. Of, like I said, the two title matches are for the NXT and the NXT Women's Championship tonight. And the debut of Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux. I think it just only went by Scarlett, though. But we do kick off the show, though, uh, tonight with Johnny Gargano. Uh, one thing I could say, they are really trying to transform Gargano and uh, Candice LeRae. And since, you know, we gave Candice a whole heel look last week, what do we do this week? No more Rebel Heart theme song. Uh, we got a new theme song for Johnny Gargano, which it does have to hit his, you know, give more about his heel persona. So if we're going to go into a full transformation, they have to, you know, transform it as much as possible. Uh, I guess like a lot of other people said, he is not coming out no more to a, um, a Paramore cover band theme song, it looks like. So it looks now he's got a, a little dark, darker music, so it's okay. Uh, but he did have a match against, uh, Donovan Dijak out there. Um, good match, I will say that, um. Like I said, a lot of it was Dijak dominating Gargano throughout a lot of the match. Uh, Candice LeRae came in throughout the match as a distraction. You know, Gargano ended up hitting a couple dives here and there, distracting the referee, and even hurting um, Dijak's leg, which he was still able to recover from. But after distracting the referee one more time, uh, Gargano was able to get the uh, DDT. So, no DIY kick or... Um, you know, Gargano escaped, he went by his, um, big DDT from, well, springboard DDT from the ropes and everything, I should say, um, he has wanted to move with the DDT before, I guess I forget that sometimes, I just thought he would have gotten, like, the DIY kick out of nowhere after, you know, distracting the referee, after, you know, Candice getting involved, but, um, he ended up winning with the DDT, getting the, uh, one, two, three, which I figured Gargano was gonna win, they're trying to get this heel, Persona thing going out there as much as possible. So they're trying to go as full, very full transfer, transfer, um, transformation for Johnny Gargano, though. I will say that. But at least he got rid of that, um, theme song. I'm still, um, I wouldn't say I'm iffy with, uh, heel Gargano, but, you know, I've already said Candice Ray desperately need to turn heel. But, you know, Gar Gargano, um, he looks like he's making this work. Uh, let's still give it time. tournament I think they were going into um let me check a note here but um yeah what was next after this uh but yes more of the cruiserweight tournament though um Akira Tozawa versus Jack Gallagher you, you know so many people that asked me tonight that say um you know I guess I haven't been watching Jack Gallagher in a while because what is this he has right now this whole shipyard tattoo dark thing going on I should say um Whatever they got, um, Gallagher, I think I've said it before about him. I don't even understand what he looks like sometimes, but, um, this is his new heel persona. But as I expected, of course, he is still kind of jobbing out in this tournament. So, him jobbing, um, jobbing in Tozawa, which was expected. Tozawa gets two, two wins in a row. Um, it wasn't that very much of a long match, but Tozawa ended up hitting the, um, the Senton, which he kind of missed a lot of that move. Let me say that also. But, uh, pretty much they talked to him about El Hill, their Fantasma, since, you know, Tozawa's got two wins right now. You know, it's crazy. This guy's put on these good matches on NXT, but when you put him on Monday Night Raw, he's just jobbing the motherfuckers like crazy. Cause then you get killed by Lashley. Um, it's no harm done with, in a way, but, you know, he still won. And I guess his next amount.
I guess they're trying to get some type of feud still going with her and Zia Lee. I thought they stopped it already because I don't even understand why it's still going. Chelsea Green winning with them pretty air. It's, you know, it's whatever. I, I Then again, I don't even know where him, her and, you know, Robbie E there are going right now either. I'm still trying to understand what that whole thing is um, kind of trying to do. But apparently they still want to do Zia Lee and Aaliyah for whatever reason. I'm trying to give this a chance, but... um. I don't know where it's going, okay? I really don't. But, um, moving on, like I said, uh, that's on commentary. Also, they still had, um, you know, Ronaldo, Beth Phoenix, and, uh, Tom Phillips. But next was the long and awesome debut. And man, was this entrance fucking awesome. This is probably one of our biggest highlights of the entire night. The debut of, Ki oh, I can't say Killer no more. I'm trying not to say that. I, I, rather, I like just calling him Cross. I still think they should have stuck with Cross, but the, mm, the long way to debut though, um, this was a crazy entrance. Let me, let me kind of explain a little of this. I'm going to do this the best way I can because it was black and white, um, Scarlett Bordeaux, I know she had like a lot of leather on. Um, I'm sure people say, you know, her and Liv Morgan kind of wear the same gear when you think about it, even though Scarlett did it first. But, um, you know, some people say it even looked like Black Canary out there tonight. But just the filters they had with it from going to black and white with the song. I don't know the song all the way, but I know that she was mouthing off the words to it to Cross, who just looks like a killer, no pun intended, and everything. But. You know, they pretty much get in the ring then, and everything kind of goes red and yellow. You got all this smoke in the ring, and they got a special graphic for both of them, and they put a lot of stock in the uh, Killer Cross, okay? Obviously, he has a lot of stock in him, and they really look at him as a big thing. I know they're, they're going to do what they can to build him up. Come on, he, they had him attack Champa, all right? So, they're doing a lot to get Killer Cross over, and I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, yes, this entrance would have looked fucking awesome in front of a crowd and yes it would have looked awesome in front of a crowd okay but even alone it, it still was great to see i enjoyed this entrance a lot it looked he looked like it was a badass entrance okay and he just kills leon ruff two big saido suplexes and his cross jacket finisher uh for the submission so a big debut for both killer cross and um scarlet very enjoyable and i'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to see what he was going to do in NXT. And I've seen a lot of positives about him tonight. So uh, he was like one of the biggest highlights on the show tonight. Just for his in-ring debut. And how his you know his entrance was going to go. And, and it looked great. It looked awesome. And he looked like a badass out there. He just it was just a fucking awesome entrance. Even I had to tell myself. Holy shit. I had to rewind it just to look at it one more time. That's how great it was. So I rec highly recommend looking up Killer Cross's. Um, I'm sorry. Carrying Cross's. Um. Just entrance and match tonight. But next, though, um, we got Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher at the Imperium. Had a video early in the night talking about taking the tag titles from them. They said they're going to be ready next week. They're ready to fight, and they're going to have Imperium tap out. So the tag team titles will be on the line next week. Next, uh, Charlotte versus Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Championship. Um... Now, I'm a little iffy on this match because, listen, I know a lot nowadays motherfuckers just hate Charlotte to the fucking core just because she's on either this show or Monday Night Raw and people look at this as a big overload of her and are just sick of her and people were really worried about this match of who was going to go over, which I kind of figured who was going to go over anyways, but, um... You know, coming in this match, I'm like, this is going to be a badass match. It's Charlotte, it's EO. You know you're going to see some great shit from them. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, if it's not EO winning, it's not going to be good and everything. But yeah, I think this was going to be a great match. I thought it would be, uh, which I didn't think it was a bad match. I thought it was good. It was it was solid. I'm not, it, you know, I'm not against it. You know, I've probably seen better. And I'm, I'm sure people are going to say it's the atmosphere without a crowd and whatnot. But, um... I still thought this was a very good match um, between Charlotte and Io Shirai. It pretty much ended up, though, in, in a disqualification, though, because Io Shirai went for her big moonsault uh, going to the outside of the ring. But Charlotte, Charlotte, um, you know, Io landed on her feet, but Charlotte got a kendo stick and started hitting Io Shirai with it then several times and pretty much put her legs onto the, you know, the turnbuckle. It's going to put the figure four in. Next thing you know, 
Rhea Ripley came out, I guess this is her return in a way, attacked Charlotte, which, you know, my friend Steven said kind of makes her like a sore, a sore loser now because she did lose fair and square at WrestleMania, but she came out for the save and Charlotte pretty much backed out of there then. So, you know, she pretty much tried to help EO Shirai, but EO was pissed off, pretty much getting away as they talked to Ripley outside, seeing she had to do, she was sick of Charlotte, EO was pissed. Honestly, I see a triple threat match in the future. Now, I'm sure people look at this as, a, you know, a lot of some positives and negatives. On the, ne on the positive, you don't have to see E.O. Shirai lose clean to Charlotte. Because, honestly, um, I was kind of waiting on it for happening tonight. Just because only, A, I'm sure the, the internet marks were going to bitch and moan and complain online about Charlotte winning again. At this point, for me, I just don't really care at this point, okay? It's kind of whatever. It's Charlotte being Charlotte. At least I know I'll get a great see a great match out of this don't get me wrong do i agree she's over push yes yes i do and come on you've heard what i said about her during my wrestlemania review when she went against um eo shirai wasn't the biggest fan of the finish i thought it was a great fucking match but i understand why they did it at the same time though okay i did and at least tonight you didn't see her just go over eo shirai clean so at least they protected shirai here with this dq thing and could be a you know most likely a triple threat match in the future, because I'm sure people would have moaned and bitched online. I would have seen all over Twitter tonight of, oh, Charlotte's going over again. Charlotte's going over again. Charlotte's going over again. Which, in a way, I would have expected it. But I know I would have gotten a great match. But I thought the match was pretty good. It was okay for what it was. Like I said, I've seen better, but, you know, I, I feel like I was waiting for something more bigger to happen. Uh, next, Kushida went against Jake Atlas. Jesus, this match went on like what three minutes so i don't really have a lot to say about it because she the one with his hoverboard pretty much tapping um you know jay catless out there really fast so i can't say it was much of a match it just honestly went kind of quick uh kushida won he pretty much talked to him after and uh he said he's going to you know be, be cruiserweight champion he's going to um you know he's going to own all the titles he says and Pretty much shows why he's the best. So yeah, this tournament continues. Um, you know, I've already said what I've said about. This. I've already said what I've had to say about this tournament already. I already know Spud shit is still a work to me. I really believe Rockstar Spud thing is a work at this point. Um, I would not be surprised if somehow this guy ends up in the finals. I really wouldn't. That then I would be surprised if he wins. To be honest, but Kushida moves on with two wins as expected. So yeah, Kushida uh, wins the like I said tournament. Next, we got Finn Balor uh, coming out on a podium for some reason. We we had I, we didn't they had dream talk on the podium. I didn't think they have anything else for a podium. And Balor pretty much talked about who attacked him, uh, you know, last week. Who was the one that tried to take him out? There's a lot of snakes in this business, he says. And, you know, they're not sure now, but they see it as a, as a push, okay? You know, attack the guy who gets the push. And Balor pretty much, uh, you know... You may have your lights and lasers and whatnot, but uh, he's going to um, squash you. You don't come for the prince, all right? You just don't. He's a patient man, he says. But um, whoever attacked him is going to get squashed, okay? After trying to, um, you know, because they're not getting a push. So a lot of inside jokes and Balor here, I should say, about who's getting a push and whatnot. But next was Cameron Grimes. He went against um, Denzel DeGerante. Um... Grimes won with his caveman stop, but then he got he had promo time. I thought this was one of the best things of the night. I thought this was great. Uh, he starts talking about Balor and everything, and you know, no one deserves more than I deserve right now. And you know, I don't know who tech Balor, but if Balor was right here right now, I punch him, I slap him in the face. Uh, you know, I would beat the crap out of him, and then Balor just walks behind him. And then, you know, he just looks at Grimes, and Grimes just looks like, you know, Trevor Lee, that he just looks so shocked and bad. So, so what's this? You gonna, you gonna slap me in my face? You gonna slap me in my face? What's good? Come on, come on, do it. Come on, slap me in my face. Come on, do it. Do it. Basically, uh, Grimes got caught lacking out here, okay? He started talking shit. Balor heard it, and basically, he came in to tell you, what, what's all that shit you talking about me now, bro? Huh? What's good? Come on, come on, talk that shit. Talk that shit. What you gonna do? You, you going you gonna to slap me? Do it right now then, bitch. That, that's that's what it looked like. You, you, you got caught lacking out here. Grimes caught lacking. He tried to hit Balor. Balor pretty much took him down. 
double stomped them then and pretty much looked in the camera saying like, you know there's a lot of snakes hiding right now so uh if i'm gonna take the snake's head off i gotta cut the snake's head off to take him out all right so balor looked like a fucking badass right here let me say that he, he looked great that was a great segment and i know it's gonna be a match next week with him and grimes i guess they need Balor to do something else you could say that walter attacked them but until they can get walter out of the uk i should say um i guess they gotta have Another, it's another murder mystery. More mysteries in NXT right now. We got luchador ninjas uh, kidnapping people. Uh, random people getting attacked backstage. Now we gotta see who's taking out Finn Balor now for some reason. I don't know why, but we'll see what happens. But I still think it could be Walter. But I did enjoy that entire segment after with Balor and Grimes. Especially him just coming. You gonna slap me? Slap my face. Slap me right now. Pretty much caught him slipping. Uh, but next though was the main event. Adam Cole versus Velveteen Dream for the NXT title. Um, let me say one thing about this snap match. Number one, way too much glitter in this damn match. I don't know how much glitter Dream was wearing out there, but he was wearing a lot. And I mean a lot of glitter throughout this match. You know, I didn't hate this match or anything. I really thought Dream was going to win the championship. Not really. I've kind of figured that for a while now. And I was waiting for some screwy finish to happen at the end of this match. I enjoyed the match. I thought it was good. But, of course, you know, Dream, um... I think he hit the Death Valley Driver, I believe, on Cole. Uh, we got a super kick on him. Dream it. Fell on the Cole after the super kick getting the pin. But, of course, Undisputed Era comes out. Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish. Um, Dexter Loomis, Sam Shaw there. Pretty much the serial kill themselves. Cross him under the ring. And, you know, they try to, Undisputed Era try to attack him. But Loomis takes them out. Cole gets involved in. Uh, but, you know, Loomis ends up hitting the referee in at one point. Because the uh, referee tries to stop him, but, you know, once once again, ref him up, so the ref is down. Dream pretty much hit Cole um, with the Purple Rainmaker, but there was no referee to count then, so that couldn't work. Um, Dream went to get the ref, but Cole pretty much hit him with a super kick then. Hit him with the last shot. Adam Cole still retains the NXT title. So not that long of a main event. I actually thought it would have been longer, but given I look at the time right here, it was going to be some screwy finish by the end of this match, okay? And that's what we got from this. Did I really ever see Cole winning the title? Not, 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 I mean, not Cole. I mean, did I ever see Dream win the title? Not really. Uh, I know, and they've been hyping this for a while, but did I really believe he was going to be Adam Cole for it? I don't know. Now, he could have an out due to the referee being down and could blame Loomis, or maybe it's a tag team with him, or probably it's going to be a feud between Dream and, um, you know, Dexter there, the you know, serial killer Sam Shaw. So, we'll see what happens from that. But, uh, you, know, you know, the match, match was good, I will say that. It, it was pretty good, but I expected more of a... I'm sure people thought it was going to be a bigger match, probably main event level or whatnot. But, you know, it was just a lot of story going throughout most of this. And, uh, Scurry somewhat overbooked finished in a way. Because, honestly, between that and NXT Women's Title Match, you think this was a takeover level card. But, unfortunately, you did not get those type of matches uh, tonight. Which was still good, but not as great as you expected them to be, okay? I thought NXT was pretty good tonight on the, on some of its parts. I thought the best thing on here was the debut of Karrion Cross. That was the biggest highlight of this show. I like the Balor thing and um, Cameron Grimes. That was pretty good. Um... Good. Uh, cruiserweight tournament is cruiserweight tournament. I don't really got a lot to say from that. I kind of figured who was going to win. I don't know why they're doing Zia Lee and Aaliyah still, but I guess we'll see what comes from that. Uh, I've already talked about the title matches already, so I'm sure it'll be a triple threat match for the women's title. Cole and uh, well, Dream, maybe Dream still go out after the title. I don't know where they move Cole on to somebody else, okay? But, um, I would just, like I said, for way too much freaking glitter throughout this match. I'm trying to enjoy more and more of Heel Gargano. The transformation continues. Like I said, it changes his music now. So, at least they are still st going somewhere with that. So, we'll see what happens. But, mm. Yeah, that's um, what I can say about this show. Like I said, two title matches. Biggest thing out here was Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux tonight, alright? The big debuts on this show, and it was fantastic. But other than that, 
I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Comment, subscribe. Tell me what you thought about NXT tonight. What Did you like the show? Did you not like the show? Did you expect some type, type of takeover level show going to happen? I know this is taped and everything, but did you expect that? And what do you think about Killer Cross? Sorry, Carrie and Cross. Or I like to call him Cross debut. What do you think about his debut in general? And did you think, um, just think he was just badass out there? Because I enjoyed it, okay? I enjoyed it a lot. So that's something I liked. But other than that, I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at, 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 at follow me on Twitter at Hood at Night 890. I'm getting tongue tied here, alright? But um follow me on Twitter at Hood at Night 890 and check out anything else uh video that is online. So I will have an AEW review sooner or later. Um throughout this night if I'm not having any other computer problems. But yeah, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.